Welcome to worship this fifth Sunday of Easter and what a special week we've come through as we've each in our own way marked the 75th anniversary of VE Day and we've looked back on the celebrations of a generation who came through that terrible time and who won a great victory over an evil that spread throughout Europe and to other parts of the world. As we have applauded that generation, so too we continue to applaud those who serve on the front line in hospitals and research labs and providing essential services during this COVID pandemic. And of course, we continue to shield one another by staying at home and observing safe distancing when we're out buying foods and medicines and getting our daily exercise. As we gather today to worship God, we do so hearing the words of the psalmist. In Psalm 47, the psalmist says, The shields of the earth belong to God. He is highly exalted. Clap your hands, all peoples. Shout to God with loud songs of joy. And so we begin our worship from Kreef today with words adapted from Psalm 46 by the late Richard Bewes, former minister of my old church, All Souls Church, Langham Place in London. And I invite you to sing along with a special recording put together for VE Day from the homes of the members of the All Souls Church Choir and Orchestra as we sing together, God is our strength and refuge. Isn't that a tremendous hymn of praise? The psalm speaks of creation and new creation and for us it links the books of Genesis and Revelation and it reminds us that in Christ our strength and refuge comes from Almighty God. Let's join our hearts together in a word of prayer and as always I'll pray first and then I invite you to join me in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. 
Oh God, as we come before you today, not only do we thank you that we are created in your image, but in your Son, Jesus the Christ, you became one of us. And so you know that at times it can be difficult for us to look forward in hope, difficult to face the future, especially in times of illness, in times when we experience great loss, in times when we are separated from those we love. But as we've just sung, you are our strength and our refuge, our hope in time of trouble. These are ancient words, but they're as true today as the day they were first written. And so in the places we are today, we're reminded that you are our God and that you are with us as you've been with every generation who have come through good times and bad times. God is with us, offering us a glimpse of heaven, a teaser of the new things that are to come. So however difficult and however challenging, however uncomfortable, we put our trust in you, our God. For you are the creator God, the maker of all that is seen and all that is hidden. And we gather wherever we are today to worship and adore you, knowing that you are still active in our lives, that you are active in the whole of your creation. Although at this time the doors of our homes are closed to those not in our household, may the doors of our hearts always be open and welcome. May our love be shared with all people. May our worship and our praise of you be honest and true. Heavenly Father, as we seek to follow in the way of Jesus, may others see you in us as the disciples saw you in Jesus. Merciful God, we are sorry for the times when we fail you, for the times when we turn from your way to follow our own path. We are sorry for the times that we misunderstand or disregard your will for us. We come humbly before you today and ask for your acceptance. Help us to accept your free offer of forgiveness and put us back on the right pathway. Lead us to your kingdom here on earth and help us as we assist you in its creation. For that and for these things we pray together as Jesus taught his followers, saying, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. There's been much speculation in recent days about how and when we might begin to see the little changes to the current lockdown across Scotland and the rest of the UK. Later today, the Prime Minister will be speaking to the nation and we may have a clearer understanding of what lies ahead in the weeks and months to come, just as the First Minister has done here in Scotland. There's a very understandable desire to know what happens next. As I watched the images from 75 years ago, seeing these celebrations that the Second World War, at least in Europe, was over, it was marvellous to see the people celebrating. But we know that life did not immediately revert to how it had been. Millions of people had died, and it took many more months before the war was completely over, and it took months and years for people to return home and for a new normal to be established. And yet, many good things, many new things began in the years that followed, not least the creation of the National Health Service. The generation that we are part of, all around the world today, we face that same uncertainty not just day to day as we go through this time of pandemic, but 
also when we eventually emerge into a new but different normal. And I wonder what new things will we create in the months and years ahead, just as we've been doing new things over these past few weeks. Since the start of Advent, we've gathered together Sunday by Sunday, as we now do in our homes, and we've looked into the Gospels and we have followed the life of Christ. But of course, the New Testament doesn't stop with the events of Easter and the days immediately following. Rather, it goes on to tell us what began to happen in the life of the church. And really, the Bible is split into these three different sections. Firstly, there's the Old Testament, which follows the life of Israel. And then there are the Gospels, which follow the life of Christ. And then in the third section of the Bible, namely the Acts, the Letters, the Revelation, we are able to follow the beginning of the life of the church. And really without the Acts, the New Testament would be seriously impoverished. For although we have these four accounts of, of Jesus in the Gospel, we've only this one account of the early church. So the book of Acts occupies an indispensable place in the Bible. And in it, Luke tells us of the ascension of Jesus and the coming of the Holy Spirit. He tells us of the ministries of Stephen and Philip, of the dramatic conversions of Saul and Cornelius, after which Peter begins to fade a bit into the background. And Luke's hero, Paul, begins to dominate the stage as he brings people to saving faith in Jesus Christ and as he plants and strengthens the fledgling church around Asia and into Europe. It's this third section of the Bible, the Acts, the Letters, the Revelation, that I'm going to try to lead us through over these next four months. And as we make that journey together, I hope that we will all be inspired for what lies ahead for us as a church here in Creef and wherever else we may be. And so we begin in the book of Acts. And as we've said before, we can have confidence in what is recorded here because it gathers together the testimony of reliable eyewitnesses. So let's listen to the word of God. Acts, Acts chapter 1 In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave them many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of forty days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day's walk from the city. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those present were Peter, John, James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, 
and Simon the Zealot, and Judas son of James. They all joined together constantly in prayer, along with the women and Mary the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers, a group numbering about a hundred and twenty, and said, Brothers and sisters, the scripture had to be fulfilled in which the Holy Spirit spoke long ago through David concerning Judas, who served as guide for those who arrested Jesus. He was one of our number and shared in our ministry. With the payment he received for his wickedness, Judas bought a field. There he fell headlong, his body burst open, and all his intestines spilled out. Everyone in Jerusalem heard about this, so they called that field in their language Akeldama, that is, field of blood. For, said Peter, it is written in the book of Psalms, May his place be deserted, let there be no one to dwell in it, and may another take his place of leadership. Therefore it is necessary to choose one of the men who have been with us the whole time the Lord Jesus was living among us, beginning from John's baptism to the time when Jesus was taken up from us. For one of these must become a witness with us of his resurrection. So they nominated two men, Joseph, called Barsabbas, also known as Justus, and Matthias. Then they prayed, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which of these two you have chosen to take over this apostolic ministry, which Judas left to go where he belongs. Then they cast lots, and the lot fell to Matthias. So he was added to the eleven apostles.
empty praise Thou mine inheritance Now and always Thou and Thou only The first in my heart High King of heaven My treasure Thou art You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses to the ends of the earth. As I said, over the next few weeks we're going to be studying the book of Acts and although in our Bibles it's separated from the Gospel of Luke by the Gospel of John, really the Gospel of Luke and the book of Acts are two parts of one book. And that's how Luke talks about it in the preface to what he's going to write. You see, in the Gospel, Luke had carefully investigated the eyewitness accounts and he continues that careful investigation in the book of Acts, where, on occasion, as Paul's travelling companion, he himself becomes the reliable eyewitness of numerous events. And Acts tells the story of the early church and there's an overwhelming confirmation of historicity in it because Luke does not describe the church as if it had no blemishes. As we'll see, the early church had many. When we speak of the book of Acts, that's a, a title it's had since around the 4th century, but the title doesn't indicate whose acts are in mind. We might say it's the acts of the Holy Spirit, but that misses out the human beings through whom the Spirit was working. And then since the 12th century, the traditional title has been the Acts of the Apostles, or simply the Acts of Apostles. And certainly the Apostles are prevalent throughout the book. But in the opening verse, Luke attributes the recorded works and words to Jesus. And so we might better describe this book as the continuing words and the continuing deeds of Jesus by his Spirit through his apostles. That's a bit long, so we'll just stick with the book of Acts. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses to the ends of the earth. Today, on this fifth Sunday of Easter, we're about three quarters of the way through this season of Easter. And during these 40 days between Easter and Ascension, Jesus really focused his teaching on two main topics. He taught about the kingdom of God and he taught about the spirit of God who is coming. He, his father in the Old Testament and John the Baptist had all promised the Holy Spirit would come. 
And in Jesus, we have this relationship between the, the kingdom of God and the spirit of God. Jesus brought these two things together just as the prophets had done before him. And the outpouring of the Holy Spirit would be one of the major blessings of the Messiah's kingdom. But the disciples, well, gosh, they seem to be a little bit confused because they asked Jesus, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? It's almost as if they were still dreaming of a political liberation from the Roman Empire. But in his reply, Jesus spoke of the Holy Spirit giving them power to witness because the kingdom of God is Jesus' rule in the lives of his people. And that's spread by witnesses, reliable witnesses. It's not spread by soldiers. Jesus brings a gospel of peace, not a declaration of war. And so God's people then and now are to share our experience of God at work in our lives. So perhaps this morning you could think of that personal witness you might give to God at work in your life. Where do you experience God moving just now? How would you share that with someone else? It's good to think of these things because when we get the opportunity, then we're ready to speak a word. And then, as Luke goes on, we see that the vision of the disciples was far too narrow. And sometimes our vision is a bit narrow as well. What these disciples were hoping for, I think, was the kind of nationalistic independence that they had briefly enjoyed under the Maccabees in the second century BC. And Jesus had to broaden their horizons, telling them that although their witness would indeed begin in Jerusalem, it would extend to nearby Judea and then it would radiate out to the ends of the earth. Clearly, Church Without Walls did not begin in the Church of Scotland. It began in Jerusalem all these many years ago. And the witness of followers of Jesus is to be shared here in Creef, just as it was shared in Jerusalem. And we are to share it all around the world until Christ returns. Now, the reason that we await Jesus' return is that there came a time when Jesus left this earth. Luke goes on to tell us about the ascension of Jesus. And really, there's a lot of scepticism these days about whether the ascension was a literal historical event. But let me remind you, as we've already seen, Luke relies heavily on the testimony of reliable eyewitnesses. And he continues to rely on that eyewitness account when he describes Jesus being taken up before their very eyes until a cloud hid him from their sight. And five times in this very brief account, Luke stresses that the ascension took place invisibly and was verified by eyewitnesses. Yet it's not as if Jesus had to take a journey into space. It would be silly to represent him as the, the first astronaut or the first cosmonaut. No, to transition from his earthly state to his heavenly state, he could just as well have vanished. He'd done that on other occasions. He'd gone to the Father secretly and invisibly. But the reason for a public, visible ascension is surely that he wanted the disciples to know that this time he had really gone for good. You see, during these 40 days he was on earth, after Easter, he kept appearing and disappearing and, and, and reappearing again. But now this interim period was over. This time for his departure was final. And the apostles and the rest of the disciples were not to wait around for his next appearance. Instead, they were to wait for someone else. They were to wait for the promised Holy Spirit. And next Sunday, as we read from Acts chapter 2, we'll come to that eyewitness account of the coming of the Holy Spirit, the final act of the saving ministry of Jesus. 
But first these disciples had to wait. And just now we have to wait. And in our time of waiting, maybe we could follow their behaviour. For they waited with joy, worshipping together, praising God and joining together in prayer. And during our period of waiting, we can do that too. We can still worship together through these online get-togethers Sunday by Sunday. And we can still pray. It's good to make a point in the week to come together at a certain time, knowing that we are gathering with others, praying, singing, worshipping, listening to God's word. And what we are doing is that we are doing what we can to help with all these things through these video services, as well as through using Zoom, getting together to share in small online groups as we did this week when we shared morning coffee. But of course, there are those folks who don't have internet access. And for those people without internet access, well, our services also go out over the telephone. And all folks have to do is to make a local phone call and each of our weekly services can be heard over the phone. So please, will you share that opportunity with others in Creef and beyond? Will you tell them about it and encourage them, if they don't have internet access, to get on the phone and listen to our services and join with us in that way? Of course, if you have internet access, encourage people to tune in so that we gather together at the same time and we know that we're coming together. But if you want the phone number, it's just the Creef number, 01764, the dialing code. And then if you live locally, the number you dial is 917-004. We'll put that up on the screen at the end. To help us with our prayers, we've also started using PrayerMate. PrayerMate is an app for smartphones and tablets and each week, we'll put some prayers that you can use. So if you have a smartphone or a tablet, please download and use the PrayerMate app. To get it, you just need to go to a web address and click the link. The web address is PrayNow4, that's P-R-A-Y-N-O-W, number 4, PrayNow4.org, forward slash creef dash parish dash church. And then next Sunday, next Sunday afternoon at two, there's going to be a very special event online. This coming weekend would have been the start of the General Assembly 2020. And our new moderator, Martin Fair, is going to be installed as moderator in a very historic first, the first installation of a, an Assembly moderator online. And that's happening on the, on the Saturday and at two on the Sunday afternoon, when the church normally gathers for a big celebration in Princess Street Gardens in Edinburgh, the Heart and Soul Gathering. Well, we can't do that this year. So there's going to be a special online Heart and Soul Gathering. And Martin's installation might feature, feature as part of that as well. We'll have full details of how to take part in these two events this coming weekend on our website as well as on Facebook and Twitter. And we'll have all the other details on the screen at the end of our service, along with the reminder of the importance of making your regular offering for the Lord's work through the church here in Creef. And finally, if the technology works, I'm hoping to be live on Zoom for about half an hour or so at the end of this service. Normally, if we were in church, we'd be chatting with each other over coffee. So if you'd like to join me, you'll find the details of the Zoom link attached to this video feed. So please join me after for coffee, wherever you are. This coming week, please stay safe. Please continue to pray for one another. Pray for me. We've got some funerals coming up that are very difficult for families at this time. And we're going to finish just now with a prayer that we may continue to sense Christ's guiding presence. So let's pray together. Come, Lord Jesus, come my way, showing me your way through these disorientating days and opening my eyes 
to your accompanying presence. Come, Lord Jesus, come my way, teaching me your truth through these confounding days and opening my mind to your living word. Come, Lord Jesus, come my way, revealing to me your life through these bewildering days and opening my heart to the fullness of your being. Amen. So may the blessing of God, the ever-present Father, the ever-living Son, the ever-active Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Story shine.